In this video, I'm going to show you how to download and install Derby, which is going to let us interact with a SQL database using Java. Derby is free open source software. Here I went into a browser and searched Derby Java database. Top link was what I wanted, Apache Derby, and I clicked on the download link. I'm going to download the most recent version of Derby, so I click on this link right here. On the next page, I scroll down just a little bit, and that first zip file that I see, that's the one that I want. I click on that to download it. From there, I open the downloads folder. I right click on the downloaded zip file and I choose extract all. I'll extract it into the default folder. It does take a little bit of time to extract. I'm speeding up the video to get through that part more quickly. All these unzipped derby files need to be manually moved into a subfolder of my Java folder. So I'm going to open up a new folder window. I'm going to navigate to Java and I'm going to create a new folder within that named DB for database. Into this DB folder, I'm either going to copy and paste or drag and drop all the contents of the extracted Derby files into. Make sure you're copying all of these files, not the higher level Derby folder. At this point, you may be good to go, but probably you need to go into your environment variables and add in a Java underscore home environment variable. Click environment variables, and then in the bottom half of the screen, click the new button, name the variable all caps Java underscore home. And then for the value of the variable, you need to browse to that Java JDK folder on your hard drive. It should be within your C drive, within program files, Java, and then there'll be a folder named JDK. That's the folder that you want as the value of this variable. Your JDK number might be different from mine, but otherwise it should look identical to this. Click OK, 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 and then open a new command prompt. You cannot use a command prompt that was already open. You have to open a new one. Here I'm going to change directory into the folder that contains my uh, Java and SQL code. That's not really necessary for this next step. That's just what I'm doing. And then I need to type in this specific command, including the quotation marks and the percentage signs around Java home and all this exactly as written. You'll type in the exact same thing. Hit enter and you should see your command prompt change to this IJ and then a greater than sign. This is what you want to see. This tells you that you did things correctly. At this point, Derby is installed. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you how to set up your very first database. But in terms of Derby, things are complete. A lot of my code examples are either copied from or uh, copied with modification from this book shown right here. But there's plenty of resources online that can get you started with creating a very basic SQL database. I'll even include some in the uh, descriptions on this video. You do need to make sure that your command prompt is in the same folder as your SQL file in order for this next step to work. My SQL file is named books.sql. So this is the connect command that I'm going to type in. You'll notice it says JDBC Derby Books. If you're using a different name for your database, then you'll swap out that name with the name books right here. The first time you run this command, you do need the create equals true in the middle. The username and password that I'm using are from that Java book I just referenced. You could change the username and password to whatever you want as well. Just make sure you note that somewhere so that you don't forget what your username and password are. When you hit enter, if nothing appears to happen, that's probably a good sign. You should check in the folder that you're in. You will see that a new subfolder has been created with the name of whatever you named the database. In this case, my folder is books and also a derby.log file has been created. Go back to the command prompt. And now we are going to type in run and then single quotes or apostrophes around the name of the SQL file with a semicolon at the end and hit enter. And it's going to run our SQL code. Here's a brief glimpse at the SQL code that I'm using again, I'll, sh I'll put an example in the video description, uh, but you're basically creating, you're running your SQL code at this point to initialize the values and tables in your database. Back to the command prompt and I run one test query here. I hit enter and I see that it queries the database successfully. Everything worked out. Type in disconnect semicolon exit semicolon to get out of the Derby command prompt. Our database is all set up and we can interact with it using SQL commands through the Derby command prompt but Java is not going to work yet. If you try and compile and run your Java that interacts with the SQL, it's going to look like this. To fix this issue, we need to run a BAT file that's found in the Derby bin subfolder. Navigate to that folder, find the file setembeddedcp.bat, drag and drop it into your command prompt, and hit enter. 
Now the Java code should compile and run successfully. It runs its own slightly different query against the database, different from the example one I showed before. And I'm gonna get into the details of the Java code in a future video. But for now, we just confirmed that everything actually does work out. You are gonna to need to run that set embedded CP command every single time you open a new command prompt and wanna interact with Derby. Or you can set some of these variables uh, into your environment variables instead, because that's what the set embedded cp.bat file is doing. In the next video, we'll verify that the install worked, go through some SQL commands, and then in the video after that, we'll show how to interact with this SQL database using Java.